Hey guys, Nick Bosco here, and I'm gonna be chatting with Grant Dawson, who just had an awesome finish last weekend at UFC Vegas 22. He got a stoppage in the last second of the fight. It was very, very exciting. So I'm gonna to talk to him a little bit about that and you know what's next for him. So I hope you guys like this interview, and if you like it, just hit like and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. Thanks for taking some time to talk to me after the big win. Absolutely, no worries. <laughs> And uh, congratulations on that. How do you how do you feel this week um, coming off that big win? Oh, I feel great. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's awesome. So nothing like that's ever happened to me in fighting. So it's a new new experience. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was going through your head like right after? You know, like you you hear the sticks, you think the round's gonna end, and then all of a sudden, just like craziness. Uh, it was more like shock, honestly. Just holy cow that happened like that happens in movies you know or like to other people and so it was it was really cool it was one of the most uh i'm gonna definitely remember it for the rest of my life were you going into the last round thinking that you wanted to get the finish yeah um i thought in my head it was one and one maybe two zero for me maybe two zero for him but in my head i was thinking one and one uh but uh, i'm always trying to finish no matter what so we we got it done a lot of people, like, if they visualize themselves in the fight, they're always looking for, like, the quick knockout. No one's ever, like, expecting, like, the latest knockout ever. <laughs> so for you, like, do you visualize when you're about to, like, go into a fight or do you visualize, like, in training camp going up to it? Yeah, there, it's, it's a lot of visualization and a lot of, um, a lot of uh, thinking like that. But you're definitely right to where I'm always like, oh, I'm going to finish them early. I'm going to. I'm going to fin, you know, like second round or early first round. Nobody's ever like, at least I'm never like last 10 seconds. I'm going to knock him out. So, but uh, it's definitely a new experience and it showed that I'm dangerous at all times. So that's nice. I mean, um, people think that they want to have a fight that has like leaves an impact on everybody. And that was like a way that nobody really like expected no one thinks like, oh, I'm going to like finish until the very last minute and then like, leave a lasting imprint. Did you like think that, hey, now I have like more momentum going into the next fight? Yeah, I definitely think that it, it, it definitely boosted me up in the MMA community. It boosted me up in the rankings and it boosted me up uh, on social media. So I definitely think that there's going to be a lot more expected, expected of me going into these next fights. But it's definitely something that I'm... I'm ready to prove it, you know, people right, and I'm ready to to make make it happen. Do you go back and rewatch your fights usually? And did you watch this one? Oh yeah, I I watch all my fights a bajillion times. I'm a fan of the game. I enjoy MMA. Like I don't just do it because I'm good at it. I do it because I enjoy it. And so I watch my fights. I watch my friends' fights. I watch my friends' fights, opponents that might happen fights. Like nobody watches more fights than I do. Did you listen to the commentary when you were watching your fight? Did you hear that they were like kind of like dissing your striking in the beginning and then they're like, oh, and then you proved them wrong? Yeah, yeah, it is what it is. I'm known for, for being a, uh, a grappler, so it doesn't really bug me. Any striking where I don't get knocked out is striking that's working, so it doesn't really bug me. Did you feel like you needed a knockout finish in order to gain some more respect about your striking? Yeah, it, it always, I don't think that that knockout finish is going to, you know, make them respect my striking anymore, but I definitely think it'll make them respect my ground game more, which will make it easier to strike, which will make me look better striking, which will make them respect my striking more. Yeah. What did your coach just say to you um, going into that third round? Basically, he told me, we have no idea what the judges are thinking. We have no idea what the scorecards are at. You have to finish. And, and again, I said, I, in my head, I thought I was one-to-one. -one. So, you know, just winning the third round, I, I, I kind of knew we were going to a, a win. but. Uh, to, to, to cap it off like that just puts the the last, you know, mark on a great fight. And after the fight, you called out Clay Guida. Did you know you were going to do that? Did you have it in mind? And did, did you hear anything from him yet? So I, I definitely wanted to call out Clay Guida. I've been a fan of Clay Guida's for years. Uh, he went down in weight class, and then I thought that fight wasn't going to happen. Then I went down, and I was like, that fight can happen. He moved up, and I was like, well, that fight's not happening, and then I moved up, and so now I'm just trying to get that fight in, you know, for, for me. I want to fight the, the, kid, the, the guy that I was a fan of when I was a kid, so that, that's what I'm looking forward to. I haven't heard any response from him, but I definitely don't think he's dodging me. I think he's just fishing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, um, there's been, like, 
illegal strikes lately that have really like altered fights. Do you have any uh, input on like how to maybe stop those from happening a little more or when you are sparring in the gym, do you guys like have somebody in there as the like ref to like point out like if that's happening or if it's not happening? Well, I, the, the strikes that you're referring to are the, the knees to the head and, and, you know, one, it, it's so crazy because it happened twice in, in, you know, two weeks nuts main event and then a co-main event or I'm, I'm sorry a title fight and then a co-main event and it's crazy these guys should know what they're doing i've had 18 fights and i've never hit somebody illegally i've never hit somebody in the groin i've never hit a, na- a downed opponent i don't think i've ever poked anybody in the eye so it's really not that hard that being said i do think that the knees to a downed opponent should be legal i do think that that's something that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense because you can kick somebody in the head with a shin. You can knee somebody in the head while they're standing up, but you can't do it at, at a certain angle. It just doesn't make sense to me. Now, rules are rules. And if you're fighting at this level, you should be able to control yourself. So I don't really know what's going on there. And as for, for training, we don't spar super, super crazy. We only have one day of sparring a week. And it's not like insanely hard. You know, We're trying to save our brains and save our bodies for the fights. So I don't think it ever really gets out of control to where we need somebody watching. I was just wondering if maybe like people are more lenient to like let that kind of stuff slide in the gym and then they're like accidentally do it in a fight. You know what I mean? I can't. If somebody need me in the head while training, I'm going to beat the crap out of them. I'm not letting that slide. That is, I'm going to, uh, that dude's getting beat up in the parking lot. So, you know, uh, no, I don't think that it's a training thing. I think that it's just bad decision making. Um, so you had this fight at lightweight. Is that going to be your home going forward? Absolutely. I think that lightweight's a really great fit for me. It's not too big, not too small. Um, I think that I'm, I'm going to fill into the, the weight class a lot more in my next fight. And I actually think I'll be even bigger in my next fight. So uh, I definitely think lightweight's the move. And I'm, I'm super excited to see where I go. Not to mention winning a belt at lightweight is just so impressive because of how deep the weight class is. So you're going to go big, go big. That's what I was going to say. The names at the top of the division are like the who's who pretty much. It's like probably the dream fight for a lot of people. Absolutely. It's, it's so stacked from like the differences with every other weight class is I feel like there's so many good guys in the weight class that aren't ranked, you know, like that's how good the weight class is. There's just good guy after good guy after good guy that aren't, aren't, you know, in the top five, top 10, top 15. Did do you have to change up your diet or training at all to um, put on a little more mass to move up to lightweight or going forward? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we ate a little bit more during the fight camp. And then I, I moved my strength and conditioning from two days a week to three days a week. So, uh, it was a little bit of a change and we're still adjusting, you know, we still got to adjust the food and we still got to, you know, adjust the, uh, the weights a little bit, but we're figuring it out. And I just, I think that we're going to hit that sweet spot and, and just be unstoppable. Yeah. I mean, eating a little more is, good i think <laughs> i think everybody yeah, wants to do that when you're training when yeah you're, when you're burning calories every single day eating a little bit more makes it a lot easier mm-hmm. and like you said that the you know the top 10 in lightweight is all you know really great guys and even there's a lot of great guys that are not ranked does that like deter you a little bit from like how am i going to you know you have to really really chop away to get up there right yeah, it's it's just about being smart, you know. Um, I definitely think that I can beat everybody. I think that I can. I think everybody in the UFC at that level can beat each other. Like nobody's invincible. The issue is it's being on that night. That's where taking smart fights come into play. You're gonna wake up someday and not want to go to work. You're gonna wake up someday and not want to get into a fist fight with people, and you're just gonna have to tough through it. So then if you're fighting savages every single time, if you're fighting the guys that are just world class every single time, you're gonna have nights that you're not on and they're gonna make you pay for it. So it's really about taking smart fights, not easy fights, smart fights, and and being being intelligent about it. We're learning so much about the sport and we're learning so much about our brains and our bodies. It's it's train smarter and harder you know what do you think about like your appearances like outside the octagon like a lot of times people who rise the ranking quickly are like people who are making noise or like making enemies on twitter or you know doing crazy things do you like play into that at all or are you just you know letting the fighting speak for itself (sighs) my my philosophy is i i don't care about anybody's feelings 
but I'm going to be honest hundred percent. If I don't believe it, I won't say it. If I do believe it, I still might not say it. it I'm going to do what I want to do as long as it's true. And, and I think that a lot of guys, you know, fall into, I have to be nice or I have to be the shit talker. And I, I, you don't, I'm just me. I'm, I'm a normal human being. Not everybody is nice 24 seven. Not everybody's mean 24 seven. I'm just a regular guy. If I like you, I like you. If I don't, I don't, I'm going to say what's on my mind. What about going forward? If, if you don't get the Guida fight next, how often do you want to fight this year? And would you have any other preferences of ranked opponents or just big names or just whoever they give you? Uh, yeah, I will fight four times this year. One down, three to go. Uh, I do think that Clay Guida and I will meet this year. It might not be next, but it definitely is going to happen. And I'm going to keep calling for him every time they put that mic in my face. Uh, if, if the Clay Guida fight doesn't happen next, there really isn't. I would like a name, a bigger name. I would like somebody that's well-known. I don't want to fight, you know, 29 and 0, machach, 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 that nobody's ever heard of, you know. And I beat him and it's this amazing win and nobody cares because they don't know who he is. You know, it, it's not about being scared of somebody or not being scared of somebody. It's about if I win, I want to be recognized for that win. And Clay Guida is the guy that will get me that recognition. But if there's somebody else that I think will give me that recognition, we'll take that too. What do you think about going back to one of these events that are having fans in attendance? Do you like that? Uh, I like, I like no fans. Um, there's, there's definitely pros and cons to both. It, it's easier to have an off night without fans because it's kind of blah and like, you know, you kind of got to get yourself hyped up and get yourself going where when the fans are there, as you're walking there, everybody's cheering, everybody, it's so loud. It's so hard not to just, you know, grab that synergy or energy or, or whatever you want to call it. You know, it's really hard not to get hyped up when that happens. So there's pros and cons to both. I'm a fighter. I'm going to figure out how to win no matter what. I mean, your this last win probably would have been pretty exciting with fans there. They would have been losing their minds. <laughs> Would have been nuts. Would have been absolutely nuts. But the, on the other hand, too, though, the the thuds and the the the, the hits were really loud and really solid, and and I like to being able to hear those. You know, like I like like feeling that connection, hearing that connection. You might not have been able to hear that with the fans. That's true. Um, all right. I mean, that's all the questions I have. I really appreciate you taking the time out today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.